Welcome to vlog number seven. And if last week was all about realizing that overindulging at Christmas, eating too much is not worth the downside, nothing I ate was as good as this is bad. The reduced performance, the feeling lousy, the having to get that fitness level from pre-Christmas back again. Vlog six was effectively a permanent reminder to me never ever to succumb to those temptations again. Well, this week has been about realizing that it's not actually that bad and I can probably handle a mince pie or two. That is not to say I am 100% back, but I'm certainly getting there. Let's do Zwift first on the bike because it has become something of a barometer for my fitness because it's not affected by weather, it's not affected by terrain. I'm just sat on a stationary bike doing exactly the same thing over and over. So it's very easy for me to see where I am improving or declining in fitness. And the four rides I've done it this week have been an absolute perfect example of that. First up, last Tuesday was my debut in the Zwift Racing League. There is no footage of it, but trust me, you aren't missing much. It was a race with a couple of big hills in it. It was about an hour long and I was still over 102 kilograms. That combination, hills, long, heavy. Call it the perfect storm. It just didn't come together. I ended up being 46th out of 76, which is not ideal. There were a couple of good bits. I did very well on a sprint section. I came third on that, so I managed to pick up some bonus points for the team. But overall, it was a substandard performance. But things got better. On Wednesday, I did the second stage of the Tour de Zwift, and I just treated it like a bit of a recovery ride, really, and got off the bike feeling pretty good. So on Thursday, I jumped back on Zwift and did this race. This was a 16 kilometer multiple lap, but under 20 minutes long, fast race. Exactly the sort of thing I enjoy doing. Having said that, even though it was short, I was still caught off guard a little bit by how quickly people flew off the line, crazy quick, but I managed to catch them back up. And I spent, well, the bulk of the first three quarters of the race right where I wanted to be. I got back in that front group and I sat with them, always had the leader in sight, making sure they weren't pulling away. Felt really good. I felt like I was getting back into the groove of it. Occasionally the leader would pull away a bit and I'd get dropped off, but I'd be able to pull myself back in there. Feeling very, very positive. And then annoyingly at three and a half kilometers, I missed the breakaway. Group in front pulled off. My hope was that the group that I was in was gonna go after them and collectively we would move forward. So I went to the front of that pack and tried to sort of drag them with me. Everyone else chose not to come with me. So I gave up on that idea. I dropped back, it wasn't gonna happen. I stayed in that group that I was in, the second group effectively. Front position in that group was about sixth place overall. The back of that little group was going to put me around 10th or 11th. So my plan was just to win that group. I thought if I get sixth place overall, hopefully Zwift Power will delete some of the people that are ahead of me because they are generating way more than the 3.2 watts per kilogram limit for a C category rider. And I might even end up close to a podium. That was the plan. And so as we went into this final section, I felt pretty confident. I like this last little bit. There's this rolling section where I just need to stay in the pack here, making sure that no one's breaking away because I know that coming up is the final right-hand corner. And I know going into that corner, if I go into it still with the leader in sight, I will get them on the sprint every time. That's exactly what happens here. We go into the final bend, I can see the leader. I then drop thousand watts all the way to the line and get him. Come on! Which got me my sixth place and as I thought jumping over onto Zwift power and only one person in the five riders that beat me was under the four watts per kilogram. In fact one that was over five watts per kilogram. Those are not Cat C riders. So Zwift Power gave me second place overall. So I came off of that race feeling very good, very positive, and then went into my last ride of the week, which was yesterday, Saturday, which was a training ride, which I'd not done on Zwift before, but went really well. It was organized by the Bolt race team that I ride for, the idea being that it's preparation for Tuesday's race coming up next week, which is gonna be a time trial. I'm not entirely sure what that involves, but I think the gist of it is that someone leads the other 
team members are behind and they all take it in turns to go at the front, something like that. So consequently, the training was structured around that. Lots of short, fast bursts representing taking that front of the pack position and then dropping back a bit. I felt really good. It was running in erg mode. I whacked my trainer up to 110%, gave me those nice boosts up to 470 watts occasionally. Felt really good. At the end of it, I could have gone around and done another lap. That sort of hard effort, but then a rest, hard effort, suits me perfectly. Felt really, really good on that. And consequently, feeling pretty positive about Tuesday. Also, the low sugar diet is kicking in beautifully. Sugar craving is pretty much gone now, just a few days into it. I will definitely be back down to 101 kilos at most, which is a far better racing weight. Now, some people have been asking, now that I've moved my Ironman from June of this year to June of next year, I've moved that myself, Ironman haven't moved it, but everything I keep reading on coronavirus and the vaccine rollout and how European countries in particular are dealing with people going into those countries tells me that was a very good decision. We are a long way off this issue being finished. How am I now structuring my lifting, my running, my riding? What's my program look like? Good question. Now, I will elaborate on this a bit more in a future video, but in simple terms, there are two pretty straightforward concepts that I'm sticking to. Firstly, my training does not have to be optimal. Under these conditions, lockdown, it simply doesn't. Arguably, it never does. I'm not top five in the world for anything, training to get that extra fraction of a percent to move into the top three. I simply don't need to be optimal. I need to be above average. Do I need to be doing nine reps or 10 or 12 or drop sets or putting in negatives or running at this pace or that pace? Screw that, I don't care. All I need to be doing is stuff that every day challenges me a bit and the rest will just take care of itself. And the other aspect of all this is that my training is more of a menu than a strict structured, you have to stick to this rule book. In fact, as it's now up, let me show you. Okay, so here we go. Tuesday through to Sunday, I don't work out Mondays. Upper body, lower body, core, upper body, lower body, core. That's the weights side of things. I don't run on Tuesday, but I run on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. I don't run on Saturday, I run long on Sunday. Racing on Zwift, I have a proper race on Tuesday, that's for my team. I ride on Zwift on Wednesday as a recovery. I do a random race on Thursday. I ride on Friday as a recovery. And then Saturday, in theory, is either a long Zwift ride or out on the bike outside. And that is my menu to pick from. And I might do everything that's on there or I might just take bits and pieces. So for example, tomorrow, upper body and then race in the evening. If I'm feeling good, this upper body session could be full on chest, triceps, shoulders. It could be a proper heavy duty weight session. Equally, if I'm not feeling it, it might just be a few sets of chins. And then on days where there are three separate sessions, again, I may get all of those done if I'm feeling it. They may be a really good, hard, tough day. Equally, I might decide I can't get them all done and the run gets dropped moved on to Thursday, making Thursday a longer run. It really is as fluid as that. The idea is I come in here in the morning, I look at my menu of options, ideally I get them done as planned, but if I need to tweak things, I don't worry about it too much. And while we're up here, because I'll be coming back to this in a bit, these are my run targets for the year. I'd already mentioned I was gonna try and do one mile, 5K, 10K, half marathon, and full marathon times, and then chip away at those during the year. The times I set up here and the date they get achieved will all be recorded for January and February. The idea is that by the end of, well, hopefully middle of February, every one of these has a target time to improve on. So that's what it looks like. Is it optimal? I don't even know what that means, to be honest. Is getting bigger optimal for me at 47? Do I need to be doing that? I don't think so. If I look at someone that's jacked and ripped to the bone but can't do 10K under 45 minutes, that seems a pretty imbalanced level of fitness. But if they're happy, maybe it's optimal for them. What it is, is gonna keep me above average and that's all I really care about. So today's session is gonna be weights is it's core and then run long later on. So talking to weights, for the core, I don't need anything. I've got my rings up in the ceiling here that I do hanging leg raises on and stuff like that. But I have got some bits that I'm gonna need for next week. Very annoyingly, I had in here a year ago, squat rack, bench, ton of free weights, everything I could possibly need to do all my free weight work at home. And finally, the local gym, three minute walk away, got their act together and had enough equipment then that it meant I could sell all my stuff 
and start working out there. Perfect. And then they close for lockdown. And then they opened and then they locked down and then they closed. And I've given up waiting for this government to decide that keeping fit and healthy is good for you. I am going to become a bit more self-sufficient. I anticipate that gym now staying locked down to at least March. I can't go until March with nothing other than some rings in the ceiling and doing press ups. So I've got some bits. In fact, let's go through the bits now because I've been sat here for days and if I don't get them opened, uh, they'll still be in boxes come Monday. So first up, I've got extensions to my power block dumbbells, which when I bought a while ago, I wasn't convinced by, but they've actually turned out to be really, really good. In fact, let me show a dumbbell first. This is a power block dumbbell. You have a little adjuster bar that lets you pick different levels of weight and it really does work. So for example, lightweight, heavyweight, but in terms of weight options, I have only got up to 22.5 kilograms, which is fine for lots of stuff, but if I'm doing things like uh, dumbbell bench press or anything kind of back related, bent over rows or something, it's not heavy enough. So, I've got add-ons to go on them. feeling about this. They don't fit. Clearly power block make different sizes of dumbbell because these extras are too small okay scrap that. I've also got a weights bench, which I was gonna open now, but that has demotivated me to such an extent, I can't be bothered. Um, so I'm gonna let my kid do that, because he keeps moaning about not having a weights bench so he can build the bloody thing himself. Right, what else was there to go through? Oh yeah, I was gonna mention how next week my weight sessions are gonna be awesome and uh, really go up a gear, and now they're not, so. <sighs> okay. I'm demotivated, I'm gonna go for a run. My plan was, uh, as I said, to get some targets on the board that I can then chip away at during this year. The targets I'm gonna set for January and February won't necessarily be my overall personal best. For example, my 5K PB is 19.38, set to the beginning of last year, over a year ago. I couldn't run a 19.38 now, so the January or February 5K that I run to set a time on the board will probably be closer to 21 minutes. That's fine, I'll then chip away at that. I might end up getting below the 1938 by later in the year. So this is not my actual PB, this is my current PB, if that makes sense. Today, I fancy a half marathon, so I'm gonna get the dog, we're gonna go out, I'm gonna go run 21 kilometers, 21 kilometers. I figure something like five minutes per kilometer pace, which will be a 145, 21 kilometer half marathon. So the plan is get out there, run 145, come back in here, stick it on the board. In fact, before I let my mind wander back to those annoying dumbbells, I'm gonna go run now back here in just over one hour 45, hopefully. Okay, I'm back. We did a 144.45 and it felt pretty comfortable actually. Could have gone a little bit faster, but I like the idea of coming in bang on time. So just 15 seconds to spare. One of the nice things about doing all the Ironman training last year is it has left me able to just go out and do stuff like a half marathon without really giving it much thought in the past. That's the sort of distance, almost two hours of running that would have required me to prepare and focus on it. Now I just chuck on my trainers, grab the dog and off we go. And it felt pretty comfortable. We could have gone faster, but for purposes of setting a time, absolutely spot on. Okay, and that is it. Please like and subscribe. Next video will be after Tuesday's Zwift Racing League race, which will hopefully go better than last Tuesday's did. 
And I'll also do a video this week on the weight sessions that I do in here. People are always asking me what the routine looks like, especially in the little garage, fitting in with the cycling and the running and stuff. How does that work? I'll go through that. Hopefully by then, some dumbbells that are the right size will have arrived and I can incorporate those into it too. And lastly, if you're wondering what this one's for, this one is purely so that whenever my kids walk in here, they see this, they roll their eyes, and they just look a little bit dismayed, really. Amuses me.